Welcome to this video lecture on conservation of mass. Now in prior video lectures we've been dealing with systems where the mass of that system remains constant. Starting at this point we're going to start talking about control volumes where we can have mass coming into and out of the control volume. So the mass in the control volume could be changing with time. Now if you take a look at the screen you'll see a picture of some rain barrels and I use this picture because it involves conservation of mass. What happens is we have rain that comes down through the downspout coming off of the roof of the building here and there's a diverter located right here in the downspout. Apologize for my poor drawing skills. Okay, so the rain comes down here. It'll collect on the sides of this diverter here. So this that I'm shading in is the, is the water that's collected. And there's a pipe that leads into the barrel. So this is the rain barrel. And the water will collect in the rain barrel here. And sometimes, like in this picture here, these multiple rain barrels are all connected by a pipe that you can't see. There, you can see a little bit of a PVC pipe here, but very likely there's a pipe that runs the length that connects each of these barrels together near the bottom here. So let me kind of sketch that here. So here's one barrel. There'll be a pipe that leads into another barrel. And so it'll be at the same level. The water will still be at the same level as the first barrel. And then there'll be a valve leading out of this, that's that valve here, so that you can pull the water out of the barrels. Now what ends up happening is it rains, the water collects in this region here, comes into the barrels and fills up the barrels, and eventually the level in the barrels will be the same as the level in the pipe, and once we, once we get to a level that's equal to the height of the diverter outgoing valve, or outgoing pipe, so once we get to this level, then what will happen is the overflow will go down, and so it will continue on down through the, through the downspout and then out. So the barrels will be full at that point, and then it will just take the overflow and go out that way. So that's the way these work, and, and you can see that pipe here is corresponding to this one. So you can collect quite a bit of water with these barrels. Now, typical barrels that might be used in a home, you know, just outside of a regular home, might be about a 55 gallon barrel. Just to give you a feel for how much water is generated in a rainfall, I, I crunched some numbers. So the average square footage in a home in Indiana is about 1,740 square feet. So that's the average square footage for a home in Indiana. Now if we assume that that's like a ranch style house, so it's all just one level and that the, the roof area looks the same when looking from above, that's called the planform area. It's the area you would see looking from above on the roof. If we say that that's the same area and we say the rainfall, the typical rainfall might be one inch of rain, so we can do the calculation for how much volume that corresponds to. And that volume of rain corresponds to, when you do the calculations, about 1,085 gallons worth of rain. It's a huge amount of rain in that one inch rainfall event that collects on that 1,740 square feet of roof line. Now, that's the most amount of water that you can collect. Typically, these kinds of uh, diverter valves and such, they're not 100% efficient. So, the actual amount of rain water that you would collect would be a little bit less than this. So, maybe assume like a 90% efficiency or something like that. But that 1,085 gallons corresponds to about 19.755 gallon barrels. So almost 20 of these kinds of barrels uh, get filled up in a one inch rainfall event on an average Indiana home. It's a lot of rain, right? So uh, clearly you can't collect all the rain in that rain event and you'd have to do some diversion of that. Now of course a one inch rainfall event is quite a bit but uh, I was just checking over the previous month the typical amount of rainfall that accumulates per rainfall event and it can range from almost nothing to I think the highest I saw was about 1.8 inches worth of rain. So you know a one inch rainfall event it's not a small amount but it's not uncommon. 
And the reason I show all this is because it has to do with conservation of mass. Conservation of mass is really just mass accounting. You, you keep track, like if we look at just one of these rain barrels, you might have mass coming in through this pipe. The mass would be accumulating inside the barrel. And then uh, if you opened up the valve here, then you would have mass leaving. So the conservation of mass, as you'll see in just a little bit, is really just mass accounting. You keep track of the, the change of rate of mass inside the system or inside the control volume here, it's the, the barrel. The rate of change of mass inside the barrel is equal to the rate at which mass comes in minus the rate at which mass goes out, like through the valve there. And you'll see that as we go forward. All right, so let's talk a bit about conservation of mass. So first of all, the abbreviation I'm going to use for conservation of mass is COM, so you'll see that pretty often. And the conservation of mass for a system, well, that one's pretty easy. Let me just write that down here. Conservation of mass for a system is just mass of the system is a constant. That's pretty straightforward. It's, it doesn't get much easier than that. I think you're all probably comfortable with that idea. Now when we deal with a control volume, it's a little bit tougher, but not that much harder. So here's, let me draw a picture of a control volume, just some arbitrary control volume. And we have some mass flow rate that be, might be coming in and some mass flow rate going out. The expression for conservation of mass for a control volume is given right here, and I'll describe what each of these terms is. Over here on this side, we have, this is the time rate of change of mass within the control volume. So it's how the mass in the control volume is changing with respect to time. So it would be, let me highlight that in yellow, that, that mass corresponds to all the stuff inside the control volume. It's all the mass inside there. We have here an expression that says, how does that mass change with time? And the way it changes with time is we have some mass flow rate that's coming in. This is the mass flow rate coming into the control volume. M dot is called a mass flow rate, so it's the rate at which mass enters the control volume. So that would be this green one here. So that's that term. And there may be more than one place where the mass flow, mass is coming in. So here I've just drawn one, but let me, let me draw another one. So let's say here's another place where we have some mass flow rate coming in. So you have to add up all the different places where the mass is coming in. And then we have an expression for the mass flow rate going out of the control volume. So maybe there's some outlets to our control volume and every time we take a little piece of fluid out it takes its mass with it. So let's sketch, let's uh, highlight that one in blue. So that's this term. And again there may be multiple places where we have mass flow rate going out so we have to account for all of them in this summation. So the way to view this is if you have some mass coming in, coming in that adds to our mass in the control volume, so that's, that makes this positive, this coming into quantity makes this positive, it increases the mass in the control volume. And then we have some mass that's going out, that's negative, so that decreases the mass in the control volume. Of course, if the mass flow rate coming in exactly matches the mass flow rate going out, then the right hand side would be zero, and so the mass in the control volume would equal zero. I'm sorry, the time rate of change of mass in the control volume would be zero, so it means the mass in the control volume is a constant. We call that steady state. It's not changing with time. So just a, a few comments on applying conservation of mass. First of all, you always need to identify a control volume like what I've done over here. Draw your energy flow diagram. So here I've shown where mass is coming in and mass is going out. Conservation of mass only involves mass. It doesn't involve heat or work. The first law involves those things. And then state any major assumptions where you use them. For example, if I was dealing with a steady state, I would set this left-hand term equal to zero because steady state means it's not changing with time. So I would set this equal to zero and say the system is, uh, the control volume is at steady state, for example. Okay, so you state what the assumption is where you're using it. Now, as far as calculating what the mass flow rate is, this m dot quantity, the way we find that is the mass flow rate is the density times a volumetric flow rate, and the volumetric flow rate is just the velocity of the fluid times the area. So if we have a pipe, for example, and I wanted to calculate the mass flow rate in that pipe, it would be the density of the fluid multiplied by the velocity of the fluid, so that, let me uh, erase that. So let's call this the velocity in the fluid or speed. We multiply it by the cross-sectional area, 
So I'll just draw it like that. This is A area. And that would give us the volumetric flow rate. So this, this quantity here is the volumetric flow rate. So that would have units, for example, of cubic meters per second, for example. It's just the volume per unit time that would be passing that cross-section, for example. And then if we wanted to get the mass flow rate, we would multiply that volumetric flow rate by the density. So that's what the rho is, is the density of the fluid. So rho VA is the mass flow rate. Since in thermodynamics we deal typically with specific volume instead of density, it would be just the velocity times area divided by the specific volume. And I know that we use V typically for volume, but now I've got V for velocity. So that's why I'll often use, uh, I'll distinguish between the two with that being velocity, just a regular V. And then I'll put a V bar to indicate volume. Just because they're, you know, we use Vs all the time. We just don't have enough letters in the alphabet. One assumption that we're making, actually, when I write this expression, uh, rho VA here for the mass flow rate through that cross-sectional area, is I'm assuming that the velocity remains constant across that cross-sectional area. In other words, if I sketched out what the velocity profile looked like, it would be uniform, meaning it's just a, a straight line across there, that there's no variation in the velocity. So we make that assumption throughout most of this class, pretty much the entire class we make that assumption that the velocity is uniform. In real life, it's not. There's actually a profile to it. Uh, but we won't worry about that effect on the mass flow rate until you get into a fluid mechanics course. So just be aware that we're, we're making an assumption when we write this down that the velocity is uniform. You don't have to write that down necessarily, but we are making that assumption throughout this course. So that's how you calculate the mass flow rate. One other thing to note is that when we use the first and second laws applied to a control volume, so we're going to be covering the first law of thermodynamics for a control volume in the next, uh, next lecture, and then later on we'll do the second law. But when we apply them to a control volume, usually we have to use conservation of mass in the analysis as well. So these, these fundamental relations are often used together. So conservation of mass and the first law, conservation of mass, the second law, and the first law. You often have to use them at the same time when you do analyses, and you'll see that in the examples. Okay, I don't think there's really much more to say about conservation of mass. Take a look at the examples online. That'll give you a good idea of how we apply conservation of mass.